I would like to welcome you to lecture 10 of uh, 2FH3. We will move today to talk about electric potential, uh, which you're already using in your circuits without really uh, noticing that its origin comes from electromagnetics. And uh, we'll talk also about uh, the relationship between the electric field and uh, the uh, potential V, or the voltage difference V. And we're covering actually chapter 4 from pages 137 to 146. To help, to help you understand the concept of voltage, I will start first by talking about work, because work is closely related to voltage. Um, if we take a look at the figure we have here, there is a force, F, it's moving an object from point A to point B, along some, some contour or some trajectory. Okay? So, um, in moving from A to B, the force is putting work, putting work to move the object. And uh, if we take a very small element here, a very small tiny differential length element DL, and try to plot the, uh, see the, uh, the DL and the F, we'll see between them there is an angle alpha. And by definition, the work done over this differential element is equal to F dot DL. This, what, this is the differential work. So F dot DL is equal to F DL cosine alpha, as we have learned from the, uh, from the scalar product. Now, in order to get the complete work done in moving the object from point A to point B, we simply integrate the, the work done over every differential element. So we integrate from A to B, F dot DL, and the result is in joules. The work done can be positive or the work done can be negative, depending on the uh, direction of the uh, the angle between the force and the uh, the contour that we have. So um, so here we have one example here. We have F and delta L are in the same direction, exactly in the same direction. The angle between them is zero. Then delta W will be positive, so because cosine alpha is one. Uh, it does have to be one, but it has to be a positive. Cosine alpha has to be positive, which means that alpha is between zero and ninety, and this will give you a positive work. Uh, we have here another situation where uh, the the ob or the object or uh, or or the charge or whatever is moving against the force. So in this case, the angle between delta L and F is actually one hundred eighty degrees, and delta W, the work done over this infinitesimal length is negative, is minus F delta L. And uh, in some situations, we can have even that the force is normal to the direction of, of the object as shown here. This is delta L, and this is F, they are normal to one another. In that case, the work done is zero. So the work done can be positive over every infinitesimal element if the force and the delta L, the direction of, 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 this, of this contour, has an angle is 90. It can be negative if the angle is greater than 90, and it is zero if they are exactly normal to one another. Another illuminating example that will help you understand what's meant by this in preparation to talk about electric field is a gravity example. We have here an object, uh, and there is a man who's trying to push it on a ramp. Um, if, the, if the man is, man is managing to get it moving in this direction, the upward direction, the man is actually exerting work, positive work, because he, he, this is the direction of his force. We call it here FM, the, the, man, the man force, or his, his direction of his force in this direction. It's an upward direction, and it's in the same direction, direction of movement. So in that case, the man is exerting work. He's doing positive work. The object is gaining energy as a result because the object is getting higher, so it's getting energy, or this rock is get, getting energy, while the gravity, the gravity force is putting negative, negative work because the gravity is in, the, in this direction, and the direction of, the, of the, 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 if you try to find the component of the gravity in the direction of the movement, you get uh, minus this term cosine, cosine alpha, or so um, so the the uh, the component. I can simply try to draw it for you here. This is a component of the gravity force. This is F G here. This is the component of the gravity force in the direction of movement. I will call it F G tangential. So as a result, while while the object is moving in this direction, so the angle between them is exactly 180 degrees, which means that the gravity is doing negative negative uh, negative work. 
Uh, and of course, the positive work done by the man is equal to the negative work done by the gravity. Uh, the force of the man is equal to minus Fg multiplied by cosine alpha d. So these two forces, Fm and the tangential component of Fg, they are equal for a uniform motion, as we say here. So this is one case. So uh, later I will ask you to, to, to replace the gravity by the electric field because it is still a, it's still a vector and we're still trying to move charges against it or in the same direction of the field. Now let's take a look at the other situation where the, the, this rock is really falling, is moving downward and the man is trying to stop it, okay? In this case, the gravity is putting positive work because the object is going down the direction between uh, the angle here, if you see the, the, component, the component for the uh, gravity this is the component of the gravity in direction of motion. I will call it here Fg tangential, okay? This Fg tangential is in the same direction as the movement as delta L. So this is saying that the gravity is doing positive work. The man is doing negative work because the man is trying to push the object upward, but he can't. And because he's putting negative work, uh, there is friction and this creating heat. Okay, and the object here or the rock here is losing energy because it's going from a higher elevation to a lower elevation, so it's, it's losing its energy. This example is very important because, as you'll see later, we'll use this to define the work done uh, by electric field or the work done against an electric field. Now we move to, to talk about the work done against an electric field. Um, so we say that the work done against an electric field to move, to move a charge, a charge Q, from point A up to point B. So we have here an electric field, it's pointing in a certain direction, okay? And we want to find the work done against the electric field by, by some external force, by some external force, to move a charge Q from point A to point B. Then very similar to the way we defined it for gravity, this work would be equal to minus Q, the integral from A to B, E dot DL. Remember that QE is a force. Okay, and because we are moving, we are trying to get the work done against the electric field, there is this negative sign. So this negative sign is saying we are trying to get the work done by an external force to move this charge from point A to B against the electric field. This is why we have this negative sign. And we are moving this charge from point A to point B. This definition of work will take us immediately to the definition of the voltage. So, as defined in the book, I, I will first start by, by using the second definition shown here. We define the voltage difference between, point, uh, between A and B. We call it VAB. We call it VAB. As the work done against the electric field to move a unit charge from point A to point B. So, you can see here Q is replaced by 1. Q is 1 here in this case. It's a unit charge. Unit test charge. So, this is the definition of the voltage difference between two points and this is the way you are using it in electric circuits when you say the voltage between two points is equal to 5 volts this is simply equal to the work done again is the electric field in this circuit to move a unit of charge from this point to this point is equal to 5 volts now a word of warning the way we define the, the, the potential here VAB VAB is not VA minus VB it is VB minus VA and it is a work done against the electric field to move a unit charge from point A to unit to, to, from point A to point B as shown here. Now there is an alternative definition which is the first one here. I thought of giving you the one in the book. Uh, VAB you can it's still defined as the voltage difference between B and A, VB minus VA. So it can be defined as the work done by the electric field, not against the electric field, in moving the ch a unit charge from point B to point A. So we reverse the order of the points. So the, the way we define the potential, it can be two ways. Either you, s you switch the order, okay, or you put this one here. They are equivalent because if you take this negative sign, you absorb it, you replace the upper and lower bound to give you the same definition. So it's either the work done by the electric field in moving a unit of charge from point B to point, point A, or the work done against the electric field to move a unit of charge from point A to point B. These two are equivalent, but my word of warning, I'm going to repeat it again, which is different probably from your circuit notation, VAB is VB minus VA is not VA minus V, because this, makes, this immediately gives you a negative sign. Now, the electric potential, we, we talked about electro, electric uh, potential difference, 
And actually, there is nothing called the voltage at one point is equal to 5 volts. This is, this is not really true. We always refer ourselves to some reference point. For example, in your, in, in your, when you took your circuit courses, when you have a circuit like this, like the one I'm drawing here, you uh, and you have maybe a voltage source here. You say, okay, I'm going to take this point and I'm going to call it the ground. What does this mean? You pick the point and you say, this is going to be my reference. I'm going to be referring everything to that point. And I will give this point a zero voltage. I will say that the voltage at this point is zero. And then I can measure the voltage between here and here. So when you say that the voltage at this point here is 5 volts, you are actually saying that its potential relative to ground is 5 volts. Okay, so there is nothing really called absolute potential. Absolute potential is really relative potential uh, with respect to a reference point that we give it a zero potential. But potential, by definition, it is a work done in moving a charge from one point to another. So it requires two points. So very often we talk about the electrostatic potential of a point, And this simply means, uh, as we agreed before from the previous formula, the work done, the potential at point A will be referred to another point A note. So A note here replaces B uh, in the previous slide. And uh, it is again, it is a work done by an external force in moving a unit test charge from reference point A note. Um, uh, and as shown here, this is exactly the same formula we had earlier. But what I did here, I replaced B by A note and I bought VB to be equal to zero. So uh, this one here, I, I assumed that V at the point A note is equal to zero volts. I, I already selected that point and I gave it uh, the reference um, voltage of zero. So this is now my ground. You can call this my ground. This is exactly what you do in electrical circuits. So, and again, there are two definitions. The one in the book is this one. It's, 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 it's a work done by external force. And you can see here we have this negative sign. So VA can be defined at minus the integral from A naught to A, E dot DL, where A naught is my reference point, which has a voltage of zero. So this is really here is VA minus V0, but V, v, v0 or VA at the point, V at the point A0 is zero. Um, and of course, there's another definition, which is this one here. It is the work done by the electric field in moving uh, the, the unit charge from point A to point A naught. Sometimes we take A naught to be infinity, Sometimes we take A note to be some other values. Uh, it all depends on the on the electric field of the problem, as you'll see soon. Now let's take a look at the first application. How how we can get the potential resulting from a point charge? We have here in the in this figure a point charge in the at the origin, and the, as we agreed, this point charge will create field in the radial direction, right? We define we say that if I, I if we want to get the potential difference between two points. Uh, a and A naught, we have to integrate from A to A naught, E dot DL. Here I will take A naught to be at infinity. So I'm going to take my reference point at infinity. I will say at infinity, uh, so very far, very far away from, from this charge, the potential is zero. And I will take this as my reference point. And when you do that, um, this is what you'll end up having, that VA at the potential at any point A, any arbitrary point A at a distance RA from the origin, is equal to the integral from A to infinity of E dot DL. We know the electric field resulting from a point charge is Q over 4 pi epsilon R squared AR, and AR, this is the unit vector in the, in the radial direction. DL, when you are going from that point to infinity, you can take it in the radial direction, make your integration easy. And so I'm going to take it here as dr ar, okay? So ar dot ar will give you 1. The integral of 1 over r squared will give you minus 1 over r. Substitute for the upper limit minus the lower limit. Upper limit will give you 1 over infinity will give you 0. This is fine. Lower limit will give you 1 over r. So now we know something very important, that the potential of a point at a distance r a from a point charge is given by Q over 4 pi epsilon Ra. And remember, this potential, again, there is nothing called the absolute potential. It is a potential relative to infinity, to the voltage at infinity, which is, which is zero. So the work done to move a point charge from this, from the point E that you have here to infinity in the direction of the electric field is this, is this answer. Okay. Um, 
and uh, notice that this answer will apply regardless of phi or, th or theta on this sphere. So this is a constant potential sphere. Every point here at a distance r a from the origin will have the same potential, which is v a. So the potential gets weaker as we move away. So I can pick another another sphere around this uh, and around this charge, and the potential gets weaker. But all points here on this sphere will have the same potential. And uh, as you could see here, this potential has a 1 over r dependence on distance. The electric field had the same formula, but here we had r squared. And because the electric field is a vector, we have here ar. But this is a scalar potential, so there is no, there is no unit vector required here. If your point charge is not at the origin, this is fine. You can still use the same formula. So if my charge, if I have a charge here and it's at the position vector r dash, and I want to find the potential at a point at a position vector r, and this is here, these are two, the origin here, the origin here, this is r, this is fine. All I need is the distance between them, and the distance is this vector here, which is, uh, if I call it here the vector r capital, this is simply r minus r dash, and this is what I have in this formula. So again, the potential at any position r, if you charge at, at the position r dash, is q over 4 by epsilon modulus r minus r dash. Modulus r minus r dash is simply the length of this vector here. This is what we talked about. Your charge can be in the origin, your charge can be at any point, it doesn't matter. You, mo you, you can simply use this vector here. Now, if we have a number of discrete charges, as we did before for electrostatic field, superposition still applies. So the potential at a point due to any charges, so if we have any of these charges, and they are in different position. This is one position, this is the second position, third position. This is Q1, this is Q2, this is Q3. And I want to find the potential here. Then I define, find the distance between these points and this point and the, char and the charges. And uh, this will be here, I will call this one R1. Um, this is distance R1 here. This is distance R2, distance R3. And then I will apply superposition, so the total potential it's the sum of the potential coming from all these charges. And again, I'm repeating again that all this is done relative to a point in infinity. There, are, there is nothing called absolute potential. Absolute potential means you already taken a reference point and you give this reference point a zero, assumed it has zero voltage. It's now your ground. The same, the same superposition applies as well for the case of when you have continuous charges. So, as we did before, we treat um, every infinitesimal element as a point charge. So if you have a linear charge, a, li a line charge, then you rho L D L dash, this is the, the charge on a tiny length. This is now is your DQ. It is, you treat it as a point charge. You determine the distance between this charge to your observation point R, and you sum over all the, the elements of your charge to get the total potential. The same thing you do it for a surface charge. You multiply the surface charge density by the surface element, the tiny surface element, to get a, 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 your DQ, DQ on the surface, and then you find the potential resulting from this DQ. This, this here is the distance between your, your charge, your infinitesimal element, and your observation point. Observation point here is a constant. It's, a, it's some, some point in space. When you do this integral, this is a surface integral, even though I'm denoting it by a single integral, but it's a service integral, it's a double integral. You do exactly the same for volume integral. These are the same things that we did for electric field, but with one difference is that here we are not summing vectors. We're actually summing scalar quantities, and this makes using a potential attractive because calculating this is way easier than having to sum vectors to get your total electric field. Now let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, we have first uh, a point charge of one micro column. It's located at the origin. We'd like to determine the potential difference between two points at a distance one meter and two meters away from the origin. So we have uh, a point charge at the center at the origin. We'd like to calculate the potential difference between these two points. If you draw a simple diagram, uh, this is your origin here. The point A is at a distance one meter, so R is one meter point B is distance 2 meter and it doesn't matter the angle between them because RB as long as it's 2 meter from the origin you get exactly the same answer because here when R is a constant this gives you a constant potential service by definition by definition as we agreed on 
VAB is nothing but VB minus VA. And we agreed that, that for a point charge, the potential relative to infinity is Q over 4 by epsilon R. So VB will give you Q over 4 by epsilon over RB. VA will give you Q over 5, 4 by epsilon RA. So when I subtract these two, I'm able to get the potential difference between the point A and the point B. You substitute for the numbers. This is one micro column. You put epsilon here, 1 over 36 by 10 to the minus 9. RB is 2 meters. RA is 1 meter. Uh, this one will cancel. This one will give you 9. 10 to the minus 9 will cancel to 10 to the minus 6 will give you 1,000. Uh, this one here will give you 1 half. So it's 9,000 by 1 half. Uh, uh, this will be your answer. The answer here, if you simplify, is minus 4,500 volts. Of course, I, uh, I, I can simply write volts beside it because this is really what it is. It is, it is in volts. Um, of course, as expected, VA must have a higher potential than VB because as I move away from, from, uh, from this charge, so if I, this is, this is point A and this is here is point B. As I move away from, from the charge, the potential reduces, the potential gets weaker, it's decaying as 1 over R. So points closer to the charge will have a higher potential. Actually, if you get VA, you will see it's 9,000 volts. If you get VB, you see it's 4,500 volts. And in, at infinity, if you draw a sphere whose radius is infinity, the voltage is zero. So this is very consistent with the answer, with, with our understanding, and you should always check your understanding of, of the, uh, you check your answer and see whether it really matches your understanding of the problem or not. Let's take a look now at a second example. Uh, we have here a circular loop. It has a, a diameter of 6 meters, and it's carrying a uniform linear charge of 1 microcoulomb per meter. So the linear charge is on this loop. And would like to determine what is the potential at a point on its axis 4 meters away from the center of the loop. So we'd like to know what is the potential at a point 4 meters away from the center. So very similar to what we did before with electric uh, fields, we will pick an infinitesimal element. So here, this is an infinitesimal element here, tiny element. So I'm, I'll try to, uh, to point to it. This infinitesimal element here, it has a length of rho d phi. And because I have a linear charge, uh, the charge on this element is rho, is, is, a, is a linear charge density multiplied by rho d phi. I will consider this tiny element as a point charge, and I will determine its, its distance or its contribution to the potential at this point, which is 4 meters above this loop. So this is what, I repeat exactly what I did before uh, with electric uh, fields, but the good thing is that we don't have to worry about uh, unit, uh, unit vectors pointing from, the, uh, from my, my, uh, my charge element to my observation point. So here dv, the contribution coming from this element, is dq over 4 by epsilon r. Now for this problem, if you notice that the radius of this uh, loop is 3 meters, and the height of the observation point is 4 meters, then the distance between any point in the loop to the observation point is always 5 meters. So this R here is always 5 meters, and as you could see here. Now, uh, DQ, I, I know my, my DQ, it is uh, rho d phi, this is the length of the element, multiplied by the linear charge density, and I am all set to integrate this to get the total contribution, to get the total voltage at this point. And again, I'm giving you a word of warning, this potential is relative to a point in infinity. So I already assumed that in infinity there is zero voltage. So because here we are only integrating over phi, the integral will go from zero up to two pi for phi. This is your charge density, it's one micro coulomb per meter. Rho here is a constant because you are integrating over the loop, rho doesn't change, it's equal to three. You integrate d phi, four by epsilon, this is epsilon unless otherwise stated, it is one over 36 by 10 to the minus nine, and this is r. Now, um, luckily the integral of d phi will give us phi, so you get here 2 pi. Uh, these terms will cancel, this one will, can this one will give you 9. 9 you multiply by 3, you get 27. You still have to carry 5 from here, so it's 27 over 5 multiplied by 2 pi. 10 to the minus 9 will cancel, 10 to the minus 6 will give you 10 to the power 3. If we simplify all this, you get 33.92 kilovolts. So as, as, uh, as we could see here, the potential will be positive in this case, and it's equal to 33.92 kilovolts. And we don't have to worry about unit vectors because the potential is a scalar quantity.